this is our second video with Wes showing how these lumps and bulges in his lumbar spine and his waist are not fat. Fat jiggles, these are areas of tight and thickened muscles in his lumbar spine affecting his posture and his ability to move properly and function efficiently in gravity as well as sit square and comfortably. If the lumbar spine isn't moving well, then he can't use his hind end and his hips well. We started videotaping with his grandma Marie, and then his mom came in, so that's what we'll be watching now. Oh, so Wes got excited because his mom came in, so we had to cut our video, and now we're gonna, again, use the posture prep to go ahead and calm him down. He's calm because his mom's here, but he's also calmer because we're using the posture prep and he doesn't have to focus on the outside. He can think about how he feels inside. And how long have you had him for, Karen? Um, seven years. Wow, it's been that long. Uh -huh. He was just he a, was year old. a year old when we got him. Wow. Yeah. So, if you remember right, when you got him, he was very exuberant, <laughs> wagging, yes. his wiggling his tail a lot. Yes. And what happens, they get so wiggly, they actually put stress and strain on their backs here. So if you feel here, right, that's not fat, fat jiggles. Okay. Right, and this side is thicker than the other side. Mm -hmm. So it's like gristly muscles. Mm -hmm. And so it's not fat, and people will say it's fat, but it's not. So we need to go ahead and make it more comfortable in his back. So his posture's better, especially his sitting posture, we can see is not really what we'd like it to be because <laughs> his back is so stiff, he can't put his feet up underneath himself. Okay. So his back being stiff like that is actually putting more stress and strain on his hips, but it's not working his hips, it's overstressed. So that's where we get concerned with keeping the muscles healthy and happy so that we don't have issues with the stifle or with the hip or with them slipping around because they can't use the back. So dogs are going to be running into each other and jumping and doing crazy things and wiggling their bodies. So you can use this on him to help to undo what's going on now and then keep any new stress and strain to a minimum. Ah, what a good boy. So you can do this standing, you can do it sitting. Okay, buddy. She's in the other room. It's okay, Libby. Why don't you let her Okay. So have you used the posture prep? No. Right? So an ex it's an extension of your hand. So you see I was introducing it that way. But the dog's skin is loose and should be nice and loose. Right? So your skin's their clothes, so you want to use this. It's just an extension of your hand, so you can just go ahead and... So, and just so you, that, well, they're just introducing it to him that way. You're getting in the field to see if he's, he's twitchy or anything, mm -hmm. which would tell you that something's bothering him. Mm -hmm. And then once you do that, then you're going to come and you're going to start back in through here. And then you go across those fibers. Oh, you go okay. across the muscles that helps to break up the thickness in the muscles, any adhesion, scar tissue between the skin and the muscles and between the different muscles and the gristliness of the muscle itself. So, and then when you come in through here, you can actually do a little squeeze. And then you can feel where you get in a little bit deeper, but you want to go within his tolerance and your safety too. Because they'll, they'll turn around and tell you they don't like it. He will let me know when he doesn't. Or they'll run away. So they can be standing, they can be sitting. But that is thick and yucky tissue. And I felt a little nodule area over here. If you put your finger right here. Feel? Uh -huh. It feels kind of like a pee. Uh -huh. That's scar tissue. We've loosened it up so it's looser, but that's not normal. Uh -huh. So, yeah, those are things you're going to find. Uh -huh. You have some not normal stuff. Well, I, I knew that he well, wasn't then let's sitting see. square. See, we can go side. ahead yeah. and um, turn him around. Come here. Just so you can get to this side. Oh, come here. And so, see how much harder. So, then you can reach across here, right? Uh huh. And work on that side because you're just working on this side. And so that'll help him move his back better. So then he can actually move his hips and his sacroiliac better. He'll build more muscle up here, like his gluteals are underdeveloped through here. 
And so he's not being able to use his hips well if his glutes are underdeveloped because his back muscles are overdeveloped and strained. So he'll start to look thinner when that starts to happen. Oh, that's a good <laughs> thing, fun. And he'll be more active in better ways. So he's uh -huh. using his body efficiently and burning appropriate calories. Come here, Wes. It's okay. You're okay. You're okay. Wes, come. Come on. Come on. It's okay. He's like, I think I've had enough. Um, but you're going to then, after you work through here, and we know that this is his area that's the worst, and uh -huh. he can move up through this part of his back. You go all the way? I go all the way. I typically would do both sides and then uh -huh. work up. Okay. And then he can come up and even into his neck. And um, the nice thing to do is reach around into the shoulder. So you'll feel the boniness of his yeah. shoulder blades, uh -huh. but that's okay. And you can reach down even further into the front here. Because his, with this being so thick here, he's putting weight on his hind end, on his front end. Okay. So his shoulders are going to get stressed. So we want to take care of the whole body. We're going to take care of the legs. You're going to do the rib cage. You do down the front of the shoulders. And then you can get in and you can actually scruff the neck with the posture prep in your hand. So literally like this, like a <laughs> Right? Yeah. Oh, nice Oh my shape. God, look at all that.